bird. Jesus. Oh, thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. Good 
Good morning, Lord. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven and above. The Holy Spirit is in my heart. So good morning, Jesus. As I'm singing, you're sharing. Good morning, Lord. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven and above. The Holy Spirit is in my heart. So come on. singing in my spirit but I'm not going to sing it
as you're typing, you're sharing. Huh? So this morning, somebody may never read a Bible, but always come to your page, your profile, to see what is there. Perhaps that would be the only word of God that we hear before they check out into eternity. It's a good place to share. Keep sharing. Share. You know, as you share, as we speak the word that you share, it is the same Lord, I'm telling you. Some of you may never have gone to evangelize probably at a station or do a Facebook live, but I believe some of you will get crowns for sharing. Because some of you make it your task, your daily task. Like Sister Nkechi, Sister Nkechi may not preach, but always shares the word of God. And I'm telling you, for you, that is your evangelism, man. That is your evangelism. You'll be surprised that the day is coming, you get a crown. Not because of what you said, but because of what you share. I believe surely God is so principled, and this is the God we're serving. So when you're sharing, don't think you're doing us a favor. As a matter of fact, you're, you're working for yourself. The Lord bless you. Good. Good morning, everyone. Please enjoy the presence of the Lord this morning, this afternoon, this evening. As you rise up to sit, stand, to listen, please grab your Bible also. Very important. The days draw near, the times and seasons we're in are so evil. I, I'm surprised men overlook it and think everything is okay. The Bible says that on the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking marrying and giving into marriage then the flood came the, 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 the children of Isaac knew the times and seasons it would take a spiritual minded person to know the season we're in may the Lord help us in Jesus name Amen Pastor Diwana God bless you people of God can you hear me? Mm hmm Is it is it that clear? Absolutely. Okay. It looks like there's credit. Huh? It looks like there's credit. There's what? Credit. Very clear. There's enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, the it looks like yes, some of them have been a blessing. Oh my goodness. Uh, Mama Dorothy, there's a woman called Mama Dorothy. She's been so much of a blessing. Many of you, which I can mention name, but I just want to appreciate all of them, each and every one of them, for the support and everything. We are most many are most of the time we are able to come live because of some of these people, mm. because they put themselves there to support us and. Uh, get us always credit to come live and do God's work. And somebody says something very, very, very touching. He said, if that is what I will do so that you can get the message to the mass, I will do that. I was like, wow. And the person was not really, as you know, the statement made me happy because she was not selfish. To say, I need to hear the message. That is the reason why he said, if the message get to many people, the person was thinking about the mass. You know, that is not self-centered. This is somebody that thinks about other people. And I was so moved. I was like, wow. So people of God, God bless you. Everybody, everybody, everybody. If you're not able to do it, don't don't feel bad. It is not a it's not a problem. But God bless each and everybody that has been doing it. I cannot mention names over here, but because there are many. No one, not two, not three. But I bless God for Sister Dorothy. She's been a wonderful person. I bless you, people of God. Yeah. So, um, God bless everybody. I believe there's a prayer that, um, that I want us to pray. And this is a powerful prayer. 
And I don't I imagine God answering that prayer. Mm -hmm. It's going to be it's going to be wonderful. This morning, um, before oh, okay, before we begin, I uh, just just bless the name of Jesus. Whoever you are, just um, lift up his name and worship him. Worship the name of God. God has been faithful. Worship the name of God. Just bless his holy name. Thank you for your grace. And your Acknowledge the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Thank you. Just bless his holy name. Worship the name of Jesus right now. Wherever you are, just have a, uh, an attitude of gratitude this morning. Have an attitude of gratitude this morning. Bless his holy name. Bless him. Bless the name of Jesus. Somebody bless his name. Kara da 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 da. La ba la brante sa la rati ba di brando shata play kali sa da. Father, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. We honor you. You are the reason. Father, we honor you, Lord. Father, we honor you, Lord. Father, we honor you, Lord. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. We worship your holy name. 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 We worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We magnify you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We lift up your name, your voice. We lift up our voice unto the heavens and we say glory and honor be unto your name. Be unto the one, the creator who seated on the throne. Oh, the man of righteousness and holiness. Father, this morning we say we worship you. Heavenly Father, we adore 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 you. Heavenly Father, we worship your holy name. Lord, this morning we give glory and honor and adoration unto your name. Father, Father, I just want to appreciate you. I just want to appreciate you for the gift of life that you have granted unto me. Lord, for your abundance of grace that you have granted unto me. For those are many are those that couldn't live to see this minute. Many are those that couldn't live to see this hour. Many are those that couldn't live to breathe what of the air that I'm breathing today. Many are those that are in the mortuary, many are those that are in the hospitals, many are those that are sick, oh God, many are those that don't have the strength to speak, many are the blind and the mute people that are mute, but Lord, you look, take care of me, Father, you shed your love over my life, oh God, over my family, over the loved ones, over these people over here, Lord, this morning we want to say glory and honor and adoration be unto your name be unto your name be unto your name be unto your name, be unto your name. we say we worship you lord we say we bless you lord we say we honor you lord we say we magnify you lord we say we adore you lord we say we praise you lord we say we lift up our hands into the heaven we say glory 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 be unto your holy name father this morning, I just want to appreciate you, whoever you are seated on your throne amongst men and Father. I just want to appreciate you, Lord. I acknowledge you as my Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I pray that you have your way in my life, have your way in the life of your people, have your way in commanding the morning, have your way in one soul and night. Lord, I thank you, Father. For it is you that have protected me. It is not by the strength of my, my might. It is by your spirit that you gave it unto me, Philia. Without me paying nothing, oh God. This morning I want to say glory, glory, oh God. I want to say glory, glory, oh God. The Bible said the 24 elders, they worship him and they cut their crowns before the Lord. Lord, this minute, this hour. I cast my heart before you. Are you believing? 
humiliate myself before you. I humble myself before you. With all humility and sincerity. Lord Father, this morning, I just want to bless your holy name. I just want to bless your holy name. So many are the times that I was unworthy. Many are the days that I sinned against you. Many are the times that I grieved your spirit. But Lord, you didn't take my life. Lord, you didn't bring your anger upon me. But you kept on to show me mercy. He showed mercy upon me, upon my ministry. Lord, 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 I glorify you. Lord, I glorify you. Father, Lord, I exalt you. May your name forever be glorified in my life. Every morning I glorify you. Every afternoon I glorify you. Every evening I glorify you. Every second of my life I glorify you. My lips glorify you. My eyes glorify you. Every part of my body glorify you. My five senses glorify you. Because you are Lord, my soul glorifies you. Lord, I bless you this morning. I bless you this morning. I glorify you this morning. You are the resurrection. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. People of God, we are going to pray another prayer. And this prayer you are going to pray. You are going to pray this prayer sincerely. And it's as simple as this. You are praying the Father God. Remember me. The day you come for your people. And you are praying this prayer sincerely from your heart. Lord, remember me on that day you shall come for your people. Imagine that God answers this prayer. And I've answered you that the day I shall come for my people, I'll take you along with me. You're going to pray and your prayer this morning, sincerely. If you need to be on your knees, be on your knees. If you need to stand, stand up. Every position that you need to take, just take it. And your prayer is, Father God, remember me the day you shall come for your people. The day you shall come for your people, Father, remember me. Lord, remember me. Begin to pray wherever you are. You are praying the Father, remember me, remember me. Do not forget me, do not reject me, do not ignore me, but remember me the day you shall come for your people. Begin to pray wherever you are. You are praying the Father, remember me. Lord, remember me, Father, Lord, remember me the day you come for your people. Lord, remember me the day you shall come for your people. Lord, remember me, O God, remember me, O God. Father, remember me, O God. Father, remember me, O God. Lord, remember me, O God. Father, remember me, O God. Father, Lord, I come before your throne with all humility and with all sincerity. Lord, I pray that you remember me, O God, on the day of rapture, on the day you shall come for your people. Lord, I pray the Father, remember me. Father, seal me to salvation. Lord, remember me on that day, on that promised day, on that special day, on that rapture day. Father, remember me. Do not forget about me. Do not ignore me. Do not let me go. Father, Lord, I pray that, O oh God, remember me, Lord Jesus. Remember me, Lord Jesus. The day you shall come to collect and remember, take your people away. Lord, I pray that, Father, remember me. Father, remember me. Father, remember my family. Lord, remember my children one day. Remember my wife one day. Remember my mother, my father. Remember my sisters and my brethren. Remember their hearts. Oh, soul of God, remember the people, Lord, on this platform, Lord, on one soul and Lord, in our 
passing for God. Oh, Every godly church. Lord, remember us, oh God. Father, remember us, oh God. Lord, remember your people. Father, remember me. Father, may I not be a castaway. May I not be a castaway. May I not be a castaway, oh God. May I not be a castaway, Father. Lord, I pray the Lord, oh Jesus. Remember me, Father. On that day, on that special day. Remember me, Lord Jesus. Do not forget about me. Do not ignore me. Do not let me go. Do not reject me, oh God. May do, do not cast me away from your presence. But Lord Father, seal me to salvation. Remember me, oh God. Remember me, oh God. Lord, we surrender everything unto you. Lord, we leave everything unto you. Father, we give everything unto you. But Father, we pray that you seal us unto salvation. Lord, remember us, oh God. Remember our families. Remember our loved ones. Remember our parents. Remember our children, our husbands and our wives, oh Lord. Lord, remember us. Father, remember us. Lord, remember us, oh God. Lord, remember us, oh God. Lord, remember us, oh God. Father, remember us, oh God. Lord, remember us, oh God. Mande, mande, bratayada. Liande, bratalia, zeliande. Lemba, karusa, lerata, adia, bataza. Lebrandi, sakala, nanamaza. Rapa, lebrandi, lele, lebriaza. Lubra, karusa, banda. Male, ade, zarata, ada. Razenderi braka luza bra mela rika ziriande za la banda la bata la banda la bata re braka luza bra dele betia me braka le batu asada le dele le branda la kali kliati ada Lord remember us O God Father remember us O God Lord remember us O God remember this platform remember our families. Remember our loved ones, uh, Lord. We refuse to be a castaway, uh, Lord. Let us not be a castaway, uh, cast not away from your presence. Uh, let not your anger come upon us, uh, Father. For your name's sake, uh, and for the name of the people's sake, for the people's sake, oh God, Lord. We pray, the Father, do not bring your anger upon us, uh, but Lord, remember us, oh God. Remember, so God. Remember, so God. Oh Lord Jesus, remember me. Father, Lord Jesus, remember those on this platform. Lord, remember our family, so God. Remember our children, oh God. Remember our loved ones, so God. Father, remember every single body of us. Remember those that have the seal. Remember those that have lost the seal. Remember, oh Father, every single one of them. And have your way in our life. Oh Lord, remember us, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. We are going to pray again. This time we are praying into our finances. Let me tell you. We are praying into your finances. And we are praying that anything, anything spiritual that block your financial and material blessing from flowing into your destiny we are praying that let it be removed. I had a dream. There was a dream concerning a certain ministry in another village. And there was a pipe that was coming from a certain mountain into the church. There was a pipe that was flowing with fresh water 
into the church. But at the top of the mountain, somebody broke the pipe. Mm. Somebody broke the pipe. So the water that was supposed to flow into the ministry was not coming. Because the tap and the pipe had been broken up there. And unto prayer was made. The Lord had to restore that pipe for fresh water that is blessing and life. Come back into the church. I don't know what that water stands for for them. But I believe it stands for freshness. It stands for life. It stands for newness. It stands for blessing. Financial blessing. Material blessing. I believe it stood for blessings. Today, I'm not, I want you to focus on that particular dream. But I want you to pray this prayer with me. You are praying that anything that block spiritually, anything that block your financial and material blessing from flowing into your vineyard, into your destiny, into your foundation, into your life, you are praying that let it be repaired Amen. or let it be lifted up. Amen. Anything that has blocked spiritually, has blocked your finances, your material blessings from flowing into your vineyard, into your foundation, into your household, into your ministry, you are praying that let that thing be lifted off. Let that thing be lifted off. Any blocky, any wall of Jericho, any unseen barrier, let it be broken off you in the name of Jesus. Let's read something in Isaiah. I think let's, let's read something in Isaiah quickly. I think Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter, chapter 45, I guess. The verse... As that forty five. Verse two going down. <clears throat> Verse two going down. Mm. As that forty five. Go before thee and mm. make the crooked places straight. He said, I will go before thee and I'll make every crooked places straight. Mm. Today, mm. as we pray, we declare that let every crooked place in our destiny Man. be made straight. Yeah. Anytime the road to your destiny is crooked, there's a problem. So the Bible said, I will go before thee and I'll make every crooked place I'll make it what? I'll make it straight. Amen. Continue. Mm, I will break in pieces the gates of brass. He said, I will break in pieces the gate of what? Brass. Right. And, mm. and cut in, in, in asunder the bars of iron. He said, and I'll cut in asunder the what? The brass the of what? The bars of, of iron. Meaning, He's going to break every unseen barrier. Amen. Every unseen walls. Every blocky. Anything that blocks you from prospering. Anything that is before you that does not allow your advancement. And these are called unseen barriers, unseen walls, unseen things that block your destiny. So the Bible said, you break in a sanna. Today, any unseen war, we break it down. Amen. The Bible said he has given us authority. Mm. So stand on that authority. That's that right. is in you. It's the name of Jesus. And you are breaking down. You yourself, you are breaking down every unseen barrier. Amen. Every Jericho wall in your life. Amen. Any unseen walls in your life. You are praying the Father. Let it be broken down in the name of Jesus. Continue for me. 
And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. After he has broken the unseen barriers, after he has broken the walls, he said, and I will give thee the treasures of what? Of darkness. darkness. And hidden riches of secret places. And the hidden riches of the what? Of the secret places. places. Mm. That thou may know that I, the Lord, mm. which call thee by thy name, am the God of what? Of Israel. Mm. Close the door. Okay. He said that thou may know that I am what? I am the God of what? Of Israel. He will do that for us. And even today. Amen. And even now. Amen. At this minute. Today you are praying the Father. Let every unseen wall, every unseen barrier that is blocking me from advancing in life, that has blocked spiritually my financial and my material blessings to flow into my vineyard, to flow into my destiny. Lord, I pray that let it be lifted off. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Somebody begin to pray. You are praying that let every unseen barrier, let every unseen wall that is preventing us spiritually or financially your material blessing us from flowing into your destiny into your vineyard today we are praying that father let it be broken right now Lord let it be broken right now father let it be broken right now in the name of Jesus Into my calling, into my ministry, in Parliament, 
Lord, I pray, any unseen barrier, any terrible wall, any unseen walls, spiritual barriers, spiritual blockages in my destiny. Lord, I pray, in the name of Jesus, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. Pray somebody, pray. Ramada, Ramada, Zada, Lembrando, Saliate, Leclari, Kadiza, Lebrata, Ibriando, Ramada, Ramada, Bakit, Wande, Red Wakatia, Repanti, Ibriya, Tadaka, Lebede, Medu, Saba, Lebrandi, Ibriya, Kapa, Mali, Hande, Lele, Reta, Panda, Laba, Reta, Panda, Laba, Rapati, Abatua, Rapati, Abatua, Lolede, Panya, Straight for Panya, let it be broken of you. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I declare over the life of your people. In Jesus' name. I declare this morning. The mighty name of Jesus. This very minute. The name of Jesus. The power in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The authority in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the power of the spirit of the living God. The resurrection power. I stand in the resurrection power of the living God. Jesus, Lord, I declare that let every unseen body yes. let there be unseen cages, let there be Jericho wall, let there be unseen things, unseen walls in our life that is blocking our financial and material blessing from flowing into our vineyard, into our foundation, into our destiny. I declare in the name of Jesus that let it be broken in the name of Jesus, let it fall 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 in the name of Jesus. I'm break it in asunder in the name of Jesus. Let every brass gate, every metallic gate, spiritual metallic gate, spiritual iron gate, spiritual brass gate in my destiny, preventing me from advancing, preventing me from being a blessing, preventing my spiritual life from growing, preventing my financial and material life from flowing into my destiny. Lord, Prayer, I'm breaking in asunder. I'm breaking in asunder. I'm breaking in asunder. Lord, I declare over the life of your people any unseen barrier, any unseen forces, any unseen wars in their life, oh God, that is against them, that is against their finances and their material life from flowing, from flowing in their destiny. Lord, I declare by the power, the power that is resurrected Christ from. Lord, I'm breaking in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any unseen barrier mm. that is preventing you from prospering. Jesus. Any chain that they tie to your waist. Mm. Any line that they draw for you. Jesus. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Any spiritual change that they tie to your leg, that you shall get to a certain limit and not go again. Today, I declare over anybody here. Who is like that? I declare in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, by the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Change shall be broken. Lord, I pray the Father, let every change be broken right now. Let every change be broken right now. In the name of Jesus. Let every unseen barriers in the life of your people. Unseen walls in the life of your people. That does not permit to go Jesus name. Rivers of water. Jesus. Fresh waters of blessing. 
to flow into their vineyards, into their foundation, so as to make them fruitful. Lord, I pray that let these walls be broken down. Be broken in Jesus' name. As the walls of Jericho came down, mm. we shout in the name of Jesus. Let every spiritual wall of Jericho be broken down in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I release your people into their blessing. Amen. Father, bless your people. Bless your people, Father. Release the treasures of darkness unto them. Amen. Anything that they even want to stolen from them. Anything in the possession of the evil. Jesus. Anything in the possession of witchcraft. Anything in the cages. Anything in the secret places of the wicked ones. Jesus. Lord, I pray that let it be released on them. Broken and destroyed. Lord, I release it unto them. Jesus. Lord, I release it unto them. 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 Father, I release it unto them in the name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name. I take authority of the realms today. I take authority in the atmosphere today. By the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, I pray that let it be a release. Let it be a release of anything that the enemy, that the evil one has taken away from your people to make their life fruitful. I pray the Father, let the enemy release it in the name of Jesus. Any hand of the enemy on your destiny. On your finances, yes. on your marriage, yes. Lord, I pray in the name that is above every other name. Yes. The name that the Bible gave it, the name that is above every other name, yes. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus. I pray that let every evil one be lifted off your destiny. Let every evil one be lifted off your finances. Yes. Let every evil one be lifted off your work. Let every evil one be lifted off your family. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus Christ. Any veil, Karadabado Shaladadada. Any evil veil Jesus. that they cover you with. Jesus. Any darkness Jesus. that they cover you with. Jesus. That you shall not find your destiny, Jesus. man or woman. You shall not locate your destiny. Jesus. Lord, I declare that let every tag be torn apart in the name of Jesus. Any mask that you put on the faces of women, any evil mask, masquerade that you put on the faces of your people, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Now let it be removed right now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus Christ. Khatama la radisha badadazala. The Bible said Jacob married in the night. He married Leah. Because Leah was covered with a certain veil, mm. a certain black veil, mm. which could not permit him mm. to see who he was married. Mm. And the Bible said he didn't only marry a woman that was that was covering with a certain black veil, but he married at night. There mm. was no light. Mm. So he had to suffer extra years to get what he wants. Today, I pray in the name of Jesus. Anybody in your destiny, Jesus. anybody in your life, Jesus. that has stood for deception, Jesus. may the Lord expose them right now. Jesus. That error will not be your portion. Jesus, name. 
Error will not be your portion. Error will not be your portion. Any veil that the enemy placed on you, any mask that the enemy placed on you, any masquerade that the enemy placed on you, today I declare in the name of Jesus that let it be removed right now. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. He has said in time. You go for appointment. He has said in time. You go and meet people that want to help you. Mm. But it's like the day that they see you. It's like they get discouraged. It's like it's not the same people that promise you what they want to promise you. It's like there's no favor. It's like there's a certain veil over your life. Lara de Ratasha. And it is all about disappointment and disappointment. Because there's a veil. Today, let it be darkened veil. Let anything that the enemy placed on your life, let it be darkness that they used to cover your destiny. Let it be darkness that they used to cover your marriage. Let it be darkness that they used to cover your finances and your family. In the name of Jesus, let it be removed right now. And let the light of Jesus appear.
to mingle with their thoughts mm. and to manipulate their mind. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that let those powers and forces be rebuked in the name of Jesus. Amen. Cover your people with the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Lord, keep them under your shadows. Amen. Keep them under your wings, O Lord. Amen. And thou and fortify them. Jesus. Empower them, O God. Jesus. Release them from bondages. Lord, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, I release your people from bondages. I release your people from bondages. I release your people from bondages. I release your people from bondage. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. I declare your liberty. Jesus' name. I declare your freedom. Jesus' name. I declare the power of the living God around you. Let the angels of the living God be dispatched around you. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we refuse and re we reject procrastination. Lord, we refuse and we reject procrastination in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We reject it in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh Lord. Build us, O oh Lord. Form us, O Lord. Empower us, O Lord. Strengthen us, O Lord. For it is you that we depend on. Heal us and we shall be healed. For ye at our praise. May your name forever be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, people of God. Um, Amen. We bless Jesus for another morning. Mm. This is commanding the morning. And I bless God for my life. And the life of Sister Esther. And the life of everybody over here. I just want to appreciate God. He has been faithful. To each and every one of us. Mm. Many are the ways and the plans of the enemy. Mm. But the Lord still protects us. Mm. There's always hope. Who said there's no hope? Mm. There's always hope. There's hope for the righteous. I said, I was talking to you once, somebody. The person was talking. And I told the person, what is impossible for man? It's possible for God. The Bible said there was a time in the life of Moses and the Israelites on the desert. They were eating manna for years. So these people came to Moses and they told Moses, we are tired of eating manna. We want meat. <laughs> I don't know if the people thought, I don't know if they were thinking that Moses was eating meat secretly in his room. Or God was providing meat because Moses was not complaining. He only ate what God gave him. So the people came. So Moses said, okay, I've heard you. I'll pray to God. Mm. So the Bible said Moses prayed and God answered the prayers of Moses. And the Bible said, and what? And the birds were squirrels. They call them quarrels or something. Squirrel. They said quarrel. Squirrel. They, they were setting birds. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, and God made quarrels come from the sea. Can you imagine? Oh, okay, quarrel. Do birds come from the sea? We have sea birds. But they don't, they don't live in the sea. No. <laughs> they just go there. But these are these are beds, different type of beds, you know. Eh? So can you imagine? They came out there. Eh? Do best come from sea? Meaning, there are some time, man, eh, where you think your blessing will come from. That's not where it come from. The people that you think will be a blessing unto you, they're not the one. When you least expect it. 
what you least expected and where you least expected it to come from. That's where it will come from. So people of God, there's always hope and don't be discouraged. I don't know who I'm talking to. Anywhere you are, you feel discouraged, don't be discouraged. Because that man says, I want to leave you, don't be discouraged. God is capable of restoring it and restoring it even better than before. That job is not working. They want to suck you because of your dressing. Don't be discouraged. Hold on to it. The Lord is capable of giving you everything in his own time. If only you're faithful. Let the spirit of discouragement come out of your heart. It doesn't have a place in your body. The Bible said we don't, God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of boldness. Boldness, I mean boldness. That is why I am very bold. Because the spirit of God is the spirit of boldness. The spirit of declaration. The spirit that declares and in 24 hours it comes to pass. The spirit of power. Sound mind. Power. Mm. Mm. Let you not be discouraged. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Anything that you are going through, anything that is happening in your destiny or your life now, in your marriages now, to be moved. Yeah. This is the message I came with, but I don't know why I'm going this way. It is anybody that is discouraged. Yeah. Hope is not lost yet. Yeah. Hope is not lost. The name of our Lord is hope. He's called testimony. He's called a God of I can do it. I, I've done it. <laughs> it's not even like I, I can is his name. I will is his name. I am is his name. He's capable of doing everything. To that problem that you are going through mm. in your marriage. Mm. Look up to God, yeah. the author and finisher of everything. Yeah. The Bible said, as he has joined together, let no man put us up. So as the Lord has joined your marriage together, believe in the Lord that the Lord can restore it. I've seen marriages whereby it was totally broken. Men took their ways, women took their ways, everybody got married again. But because it was the will of God, God had to restore back those marriages. So it is not a problem. One thing that I realize is Christians have, they don't have faith. So somebody called me I think yesterday, I was talking about the problem. I said, why do we always look at the problem? I realized that, that when there's a problem, Christians look at the problem. Mm. But we don't look at the problem as Christians. Mm. We look at what is behind the problem. Mm. What is influencing this problem? Mm. The spirit behind the problem, that is what we rebuke. But I realize that Christian, we base on the problem and we fight a fleshly fight. Because we're superficial. Thank you. And not deeply rooted in Christ. When there's a problem in your marriage, there's a problem at your work. You only are always confronting that problem. But you forget that there's a certain spirit behind that problem that you need to deal with. That is the reason why the Bible said the battle we fight is what is not fleshly or carnal, but it is mighty through God to the demolition of what of stronghold. We wrestle not against flesh and right. but with what? With principalities. There are principalities that are behind the problem. In high place. That is what we should be ready to rebuke every time. 
the setting, there's a certain family has moving behind that problem. That is what you should be ready to rebuke every time. There's a spirit behind every problem. That man that you are always fighting, can't you see that he's not himself? That woman that you are always rebuking and always fighting and arguing with, can't you see that she's not herself? Was he the same person you met years ago? So what changed? You should know that there's a certain influence. And that influence is what should be rebuked, not the person. So the Bible said, Jesus spoke to Peter and he said, Satan, get behind me. Hmm. He didn't rebuke Peter as Peter. He saw Satan behind Peter. So he rebuked Satan. It was the spirit that was influencing Peter at that time that he rebuked. Jesus could have rebuked Peter and said, Peter, I rebuke you. But he said, Satan, get behind me. Because he saw behind Peter. He saw beyond what is, what is physical. He saw that there's a certain influence behind him that he needed to rebuke. So he rebuked the influence. He rebuked that which influenced him. Mm. But the man Peter still followed him. Why do you want to throw away your wife? Why do you want to throw away your husband? Because he's misbehaving. Did you deal with the spirit behind? Why are you dealing with the problem? Why do you want to run away from your marriage because of difficulty? Rebuild that spirit that is behind that difficulty. Because you lack prayer. We always see the physical things, the things that we can see, but we forget that which is influencing the thing. The principalities that are seated in high places that wants to just destroy the thing. The enemy and that's familiar spirit that want to destroy the marriage. They forget about them. And pastors will come that it is your mother somewhere that is doing you. Which mother? It is your grandmother somewhere that is disturbing you. Which grandmother? You see, that's my problem. That your innocent grandmother that has finished. That your innocent mother. If your mother wanted to kill you, the time you were in the womb, you would have destroyed you a long time. You think you leave you for nine months to come. That's a problem with many Christians. They look at the physical, but they don't look at the spiritual. That's that. That is why in our days you find so many quarrel, so many argument. If a virtuous woman understands spiritual things, even when the man misbehaves, she will just shake her head. And the only words that will come out from her mouth, Satan, get behind us. Rather than saying, and women, oh God, the worst in the issue and they call the men and the women all sort of names. Foolish woman. Why did I even marry you? They call them names. Useless women. Useless men. It's some fool men. Like somebody always uses. And they use words and they worsen the problems. <laughs> oh my God. But they refuse to look at what is behind the problem. So you see, man and woman, married people that used to be in love before, they were always holding hands, walking together, eating together. You see, the same people after some few months or some few years wrestling one has become john cena and one has become a, a undertaker and they are practicing wrestling in their rooms in their household they are fighting 
but instead of one being wise, going on her knees and praying and rebuking the spirit behind the problem, they only look at the problem. The problem is how do people choose? The problem is deeply rooted. You see, that when it comes to marriage, it's deeply rooted. The question is, how do you choose? How did you choose your spouse? How did you choose your spouse? But you see, sometimes you can have a good spouse. But still, because the, Peter was, Peter was, it was his destiny to follow Christ. But at a point of time, the, the devil influenced him. Absolutely. See, because we are humans. And the Adamic nature sometimes wants to come out. Mm. And the Adamic nature is what the devil normally uses to, 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 to afflict us. Mm. When yes. the flesh rises up a bit, there's a problem. But, um, the men are also troublesome. I'm, I'm not referring to the women alone. That's why sometimes there's somebody that comes and say, you there, you're always, you're always talking about women, women, women. Yes, sometimes it's true. Women are more, you know, women are more into this thing because a mouth of a woman can crucify you. Most women need to learn to, to close their mouth when there's pressure. When there's so much pressure, and you need to cultivate it. People generally need to cultivate that it's a good character. Men, men can rant. Oh, they can rant. Of a man can be a proud person. You know, the moment he's ranting, allow him to be a man. The ego, ego will not kill. As a black man, I'm telling you. So if you're if you're a woman of virtues, cultivate certain traits, and you'll be fine. You, know, I, 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 man of God, sorry to come in. I've Continue. The Lord has made marriage to be enjoyable. You know, yeah. and most of you marry. No, who wants to marry the enemy? Master, if I know you are my enemy, I would run helter skelter. That means nobody chooses to run, marry their enemy along the way. You know, when the Bible says love covers all things, people are so blind in love they don't take time to 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 look at certain characters. There are certain characters you will never see it on social media. You can I can chat with you for years. I won't even know your mouth. You have bad breath. You, I'm giving you an example. There are things you hide from me. And um, these are some of the things, example, <coughs> where well, you can meet someone and a lot of things, that's why we need a lot of prayer. Let you see, be led by the spirit. Don't be led, don't be led by this, you know, don't be led by superficial stuff. And most people have missed it because of that. You know, it's my prayer that as we find Christ and most of you have now found the truth. And of course you're battling in your marriage so much because Suddenly you found the truth and you've realized you are with the wrong partner. Now the problem is man of God sorry to cut in. How do we maintain this marriage? You know, some of you have, have, have the love you had for your spouse has diminished. Because you see, anything that is not cultivated, if you found somebody through prayer, you have to maintain him through prayer. If you found a lady through prayer, it has to be maintained through prayer. And the moment you lose that, you know. Marriage, the issue of marriage, let me tell you, me, I'm not married, but Paul was not married. But if you check the word of God, the Bible, he spoke a lot about marriage because it's special grace I believe God gives to people. Praise the Lord. And it is my prayer that as we found Christ, you know. Today I'm not Paul. Hmm? I'm not Paul. No, that's what I'm saying that. You see, I'm people just... who ask, are you married? Most people here, you talk about marriage. And the first thing they ask is, are you married? Do you understand? Very crucial. And if you're a young lady here, listen to me. Do not be moved by this and eh? pray. And if you see first, and most people see first revelation about something, let God show you several, because God is faithful. Eh? Because if you, you see wrong marriages are taking a lot of people to hell. Many people are already in hell because of wrong, wrong choice. And, and the fact is nobody chooses their enemy. Hey, nobody. That is why the issue of marriage is a big deal. So for sorry to cut and come in. And some of the okay. marriage is not just prayer. <clears throat> People need to face reality. Some of you women need to change your character. That's why I said your attitude, your words are very demeaning. Your words have literally turned your man into a woman. And some of you men, your mouth. 
You are proud. You are arrogant. You are this. You are that. You, are, you see, white are spirit. You see, white are spirit. Oh. And it's the same words if, if God used words to create the world. That means there is power in words. You see, the same word that you use to bring someone, that same, you can use it to lift somebody. And I'm, I'm speaking generally. Most of us, yesterday we prayed a prayer that I love so much. We have self-imposed cases. We have imposed certain things in our marriages, in our homes. And the thing has become, you know, like, 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 a, like a rector. That is controlling. People are dying in it. Sorry? These cases are killing people. Seriously. And sometimes, you see, all you need, some words are so powerful. That's why I said, if, you, if you're a virtuous woman, learn to, to, to know what to say and what to, not to say. And when you're very angry, it's not easy to say, let God, it's an attitude though. When you're very, very angry, is it that you drop the phone or don't talk at all? Because one word spoken can destroy many, and you can't, the word that has come out, you can say sorry, but you can't take it back. Mm. So when you're choosing, choose rightly. And now that you have found Christ, always, some of you, your husband will have to be your prayer topic. Some of you, your wives has to be your prayer because you chose them. And that is why when you come to us, we tell you plain, you have to stick by the marriage. You will marry him again. You will carry your cross. You will carry your cross. <laughs> you carry your, your own cross. You carry. Yes, there's a lady who sent me a message and said, woman of God, uh, I'm going to court because he, he said, I came through one of your messages and by the grace of God, I've gone back to my ex-husband and we're going to court to reinstate our marriage. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, your mouth is as bitter as bitter leaf. Yet when you begin Holy to man. pray, these are, so you are motivated because everybody is coming from a strange background. I say strange because where some people didn't even have true fathers. Some people didn't have mothers who were there for them they had a mother by name and some are broken already you have met somebody who's broken emotionally so you what you don't know is your words alone can finish the person and your words can complicate your life and your words it. that's right can complicate your your life and if your spouse is not happy oh he will give you hell that's why when you're in ministry eh, and your spouse is a monster because if the enemy comes and can't handle you, he will go to your husband. And uh, I'm telling you, and when he can't handle the husband, he jumps on the children. So you, that is why you choose wisely. And if the Lord has not given you, go ahead and sit and enjoy your singlehood. Because marriage has become a torment. The very thing that was supposed to bring joy. I have a colleague who will never, who, he, when we finish work, he doesn't want to go home. Praise the Lord. I said, it's not, it, these are not fiction, so these are real life. Real issue. Somebody that you use your money to go and wed because you are happy on your wedding day. You look at your wedding pictures and you knew you married somebody because of love, joy. You've met somebody that you want to share your life with. And this same person has become a pest. You see them and you want to run away. Praise the Lord. And it's because of choices. Choices. And apart from that, our character. You see, there are certain characters. If I always say, if you can't deal with it, don't marry. Because you, you become a trouble. There's difference between anointing and there's difference between grace to marry. That's true. Very true. Man of God. Sorry. It's very true. Yes. You know, Donna Tana, I, I told you a story about one man. Let me tell you. Your tongue. The reason why sometimes People say, I like talking about women. You know, I like talking about women because I know some women. Hey, a woman who just within a second crucify you with her tongue. A woman can make you feel useless with her tongue. Hey! A woman can just bring you down with her tongue. One word. You just humiliate you. But you see, the problem with men is not about ranting his mouth to Women run to their mouth a lot. But the problem of man is pride. And because of pride, a man can say something that will lead him to death. Let me tell you. I told you of a certain married people that they had. Let me give you a story. 
they had a problem. And this, uh, they were arguing, they were arguing. So they, I think they, they was, there were some people in the house as well. And I don't know, because of the pride of man, you know when the, the ego of man comes, this man said, oh, are you a woman to marry? You know, those words. This man said, take you seem words. You, are you a woman to even sleep with? I regret marrying you. The day I'll sleep with you again, let me die. It just came out to He said, the day I'll sleep with you again, let me die. Because you are not even a woman to sleep with. The pride of men. Hey, every man has pride in him, but... You need a certain self-control to bring it down. And when the man said that, the enemy said, thank you. And the devil held on to those words. After some few days, when the ego of that man came down, they were in the room. And you know the power of a woman. The power of the body of a woman that's what I'm saying. So women, you people sometimes, until you get to know your value, you should stop fooling. You should stop playing around. I'm telling you, the power that the woman carry, you don't know. The power in the body of a woman, oh my God. It's only men that know and men that can attest to it. And they were there. They were there in the room, and the woman just entered the wash, uh, you know, the washroom. And the woman washed down. I was not there, I was told. You know, the woman washed down nicely. And the woman just came, you know, the man, this man was lying down. After the ego has gone down, you know, this man was lying down, and the woman started dressing up, you know. So I think the eye of the man just went on the woman. And this guy forgot himself. <laughs> he forgot himself oh, that uh, I said certain things against my wife that I need to apologize. Pride didn't make him apologize. And when this man saw the nakedness of his wife, I think, you know, you know, men, so this man finished and came to lie down. And the man started making advancement. And this woman can never say no to her husband because you are, you are uh, her husband. Do you get what I'm saying? No matter the fight, you are her husband. So this guy started manipulating and working and sweating. On top of the woman, the man died. I'm telling you. Mm. This man died on top of the woman. He said, the words that he used, he said, the day I'll sleep with you, let me die. He didn't even finish his work. Mm. He died on top of the woman. And the woman started shouting. So people came. So when the police people came, they wanted to carry the woman along and say the woman killed the husband. So the woman was trying to explain, no, she didn't kill the husband. And the neighbors that came heard, so that it was the neighbor that testified that, no, 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 no. This is what the man says. So if it happened, that means he's the one that killed himself. If not so, they would have jailed the woman freely. Power of the mouth. You see what the tongue can do. The man died because of tongue. The tongue. Pride. Pride of men. That's what I'm saying. Men, you, we don't know women. And women to you, we don't know your value. If you people knew only the value of a woman, you're not keeping yourself to men. A woman will just be sleeping with anybody. You don't have value. Value is not sprinkled upon your head. You have to. And somebody, I, I think I asked the question, he said, when, uh, what do you, you asked the question, you were like, uh, if, if your man is misbehaving, or, or, no, what did you ask? You asked a certain question. How do you keep a certain marriage whereby? Mm, when, you know, most of you married before you found Christ. And uh -huh. I, I most of you have been church goers before. So you married your spouse before you came to know Christ. And of How do you respond such a marriage? Uh -huh. And so your husband has to be your spouse. So have to be your prayer partner. And your it's prayer not only partner. that. 
And some somebody is saying, what if your ma your husband keeps cheating on you? Who who who, they, who chose him for you? And the question is, uh, the question that you ask is, how do you how do you save that marriage? Let me tell you, aside prayer, mm. if your virtues don't count, mm, it's a waste of time. It's mm, a waste and, of time. And, and sorry, to virtues, mm, sorry, go ahead. Virtues of women save marriage. I'm telling you. Yes, yes. Many virtues have restored many marriages. That's right. Because the man didn't see his old wife, but the man is seeing a new person. Mm -hmm. A certain virtue that says, ah, my wife yeah. changed. Yeah. But yeah. if you claim you're a Christian and you are still living in that same old character, that same yeah. Egyptian character, and your mouth is shut. So virtues mm. can restore the marriage. Virtues mm. with prayer. With but prayer, prayer without virtues never work. And sometimes the other day we did a teaching on Saturday that I said most of you have changed, you know, changing your your you know, you used to dress naked and all that. You've changed all these things. But the fact is it, it, if you've changed these things and personal hygiene is zilch, you know, as pastor said, your character, attitude, and every day you are disturbing in the house with prayer, prayer. Meanwhile, the moment your husband speaks to you, you bounce on him like a snake. Ah, wait see me this one. So that means you, 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 you change your clothes. Your character is still intact. So you haven't changed. And it's very necessary, you know. I don't know why your, your teaching went around the side, but it's a broad topic that needs to be addressed because most people are struggling in their marriages. Most Christians mm -hmm. are really struggling in their marriages. And, you know, prayer alone is not enough. That's why I said that when you're choosing, you know, there's, there's grace to be anointed. There's an anointing and there's grace for marriage. Mm, there's grace. There are people and... There are people who are blessed with good marriage naturally. And some, you have to pray. You have to pray. You have to, even as you walk in, you have to. That is why marriage is very spiritual. If you look at it on a face value and you look at it because of sex, you get in and you never know what put you there. It is very mm. spiritual. And you see, never, I say to women, never marry a man who has not found their purpose fully. Because they become, they become troublesome. The Bible says that, and when you go to Genesis, you know, the Lord said, Adam's helpmate, you know. You have to, before you find a helpmate, you would have found your purpose. Because if you can't find your purpose fully, anybody who becomes your helper, you won't even notice. And they become a pest. So most people, as I said, most people are married wrongly. You are paired wrongly. And so far as you appear wrongly, you see there'll be struggle. It's just like when, when a woman, when a man, when a man who has not found their purpose fully meets a woman who has found their purpose fully, they be sad, they don't do it naturally. They be, because of the manly thing, they become, you know, complete. They become that there's war. You you see that there is there is war of power, not because of anything, because a man has to be a man. And if they have, if they have not, they are not operating fully in their potential, and a woman is operating fully, you you automatically you shut their ego. Without both of you don't know, but it's like that. I'm telling you something. That is why you need to pray into your marriage. When it comes, even when you're in ministry, if somebody is praying ten times, you must pray hundred times, because marriage, and it doesn't start at the beginning when you are at the peak of your ministry. That is where, the point a, 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 is, you know, that, that thing comes out. But the and point is, it has crashed a lot of ministries. But the point too is, mm. I'm not, I'm not doubting what you are saying. Mm. But certain time, certain, okay, it's good to marry the right way. Mm -hmm. Like you are saying, certain men have not found their purpose, and the women have found theirs. But it does not permit the women. To over them. Not at all. Not at all. A woman, no matter how you found your purpose and you are dwelling in your purpose, make sure you don't become proud. That's right. Not at all. That, that is what Many I... women, mm. because of that, they want to suppress their husbands mm. and act as the head of the family. And those is God hate. Mm. It's true. And these are true words. These are, it's true. 
But mm -hmm. I think I think when it comes a true virtuous woman would know the value of and a true money. and a true man of God will not also suppress the man a the woman but will push her. It's true. But we're, we're talking about mm, uh, there's, there's has to be a debate. We're talking about it's true both sides but it's very important to all I'm saying is it comes with a lot of wisdom. It comes with a lot of because this, these things we're saying eh, it is destroying, it, it's destroying a lot of marriages. Marriages that were meant to you know, impact. Mm, because most, uh, what is it called? Most people are, most people have gotten to a place in, and most people are frustrated in, in ministry because of wrong choices. And because of, if you don't, all that we're saying is, if you don't have the wisdom of Christ, if you, for a woman to be submissive, it takes the grace of God. And it will take a, 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 a godly man to also, love a woman fully and and this is a major it's a big day somebody said marriage is a, it's a big topic and we're not talking marriage out of the will of god we're talking marriage as a christian <laughs> woman because most people are struggling in their marriage because of these things and it's not a joke most people are struggling some people would have done well alone in ministry but i'm telling i'm telling you and it's a lot of prayer the more you pray and seek god the lord himself directs and at the same time, you see, as women, we need to be humble as much as possible. A wise woman would elevate and empower their husbands, their spouse. Because when you empower him, he does better. Men are like babies, eh? Men are like my little boy. I don't care how old. Men are simply like babies. And sometimes we women are there to empower them, encourage them, much as with all the ego. With all, they have ego. Just understand. That even a, a little boy as young as my boy says no when he doesn't mean it. That is it. It's a man's nature. And it will take a wise woman. It's true, eh? It will take a wise woman to know that and know that much as they are they are young men, all of them, from president to major, you know, it is something, and it takes a wise woman to know that and to empower your man. And empowering him does not mean you should empower it over him. You know, make you because if we can all oh, that is why I talk about virtuous women. If you're a virtuous woman, you can make a man, or you can make a man out of a boy. And yeah. then when you see some, you know, let me tell you, sometimes you see some women and you jealous their husbands. You don't know how she started and where she picked the man from. Even their boxes, you marry them and you realize you have to pick after them. Yeah, yeah, boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's true you have to literally mother them you have to be their sister you have to be and it takes a wise woman because if you don't learn these things if and if you can't do this don't marry if you cannot you see if you can't humble yourself and submit to these things eh, you marry and always you'll be calling your friends to advise you these things have destroyed a lot of marriages and let me tell you sometimes they see things they don't mean and it's very cool and pride working Mm. It is equal and pride working. And, and man of God, I'm taking your topic again. You know, when it comes to this topic, we'll talk forever. But you see, when when you when, when you like you, marriage. Eh? Continue. Marriage one oh one. It's true. Eh? And I'm sure somebody said, even my son of 30 years old do the same. Me, me, me. Yes. That is the nature. I believe strongly God gave me my little boy to teach me the nature of men because I didn't know. And the more you the more you realize that the more when a man is ranting, just allow them. And you'll be surprised after they ranting, they themselves. It is 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 an, and if you can't humble yourself, don't marry. If you're not submissive, don't marry. Because you don't marry with money. With all your money, a man will have to lie on top of you. Eh? Exactly. Uh -huh. it is very, uh, uh, with all your money, with all, with your, all money, that is your houses and somebody brothers, uh, Mike, we will have tired. And most women don't realize you can't buy a man with a man with money. Stop buying men with your money. Stop it. You know a lot of things that we need to learn as women. And and no, I'm a woman, so I'm not even speaking against women. But it's my prayer that we will enjoy your our marriages. You must enjoy the man you you married, you chose. I believe there are many men, you know, 
toasting you. And Nigeria is toasting you. You know, but you chose one. And now you yourself have become because of friends. Everything you are running to your friends. Your friend that is telling you that your husband must give you money, must do this man. Her, if she, she wish her husband will give her money. But stop slapping her. And that is what women need to learn and know. Because the moment you shut your door, you are there with this man, a stranger. You are there with this woman alone. And whether you did a big wedding, whether you did whatever, you are left alone. And that is when some characters begin to appear. And who do you talk to? But one, you must pray into your marriage. You must know, if the Lord has not spoken, don't worry. What is marriage? What is age? And enjoy your single. Get to know your... A woman who knows herself better will be a good wife. And a man who finds herself better will be a good... The problem is most people have not found themselves properly. And they have met. It's chaotic. Chaotic. And the chaos does not start in the marriage. You have become like this because you yourself did not take time to find yourself. If you find yourself, eh, one, you are not, you are not, you are, you're humble. Two, you're confident in who God has made you. That is why I come here, my hair is messy, I take it off. It's okay. And I'm not, you, do you understand? Same way, you marry and you love the person not because of anything. You found yourself. And most of you have not found yourself yet. Most of you are even scared to be alone. Do you know that most people are scared to be alone? I feel lonely. You cannot marry because you are lonely. Because you marry and find out that marriage does not solve loneliness. Also, go ahead. Me, I think, I think God has given me that gift. Eh? So, when we're talking about marriage, I'll talk forever. And it's reality. You need and to you, find you yourself. See, it's, it's important that I, I realize that some people were saying stop talking about marriage and all that. It's important. It is important. It's important that I in any other thing. Any other thing yes. also. The same as preaching repentance, it's true. Because marriages are making many people sin. Mm. You want us to talk about sin, but you don't want us to talk about marriage. But marriages mm. are making people sin. It's true. So marriage has a lot of mm. people. Mm. So you are making the point, and I, I like, I'm listening, I'm learning. Mm. So please preach. You know, marriage has turned a lot of good men into womanizers. And most men are womanizing not because they wanted to. Some of you women have turned them into womanizers. Some mm -hmm. of you women have turned your husband to be drunkards because they're not happy at home. Let me tell you, with all the prayers, you must be able to discern. You must be able to discern. You see, that is why we need the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, as a virtuous woman, you must be prayerful. You know, you must be prayerful. You see, it's not everybody that is meant to marry. And God has time for every, everybody. It's not, understand this carefully, please. It's not everybody who is meant to marry. And it's not everybody who's meant to marry at a certain age. Because you may be at a certain age, but your brain, when it comes to marriage, is like an assisting year old. And there's nothing wrong with it. You just haven't found yourself. And don't rush into it because if you rush into it, you'll be a problem for your partner. I'm telling you. Most of the society have told us that you are 30, you are 25, you need to marry, you are 26, you need to marry. No. You need to find yourself because it makes you a better person. Then they were telling someone that it pains me too much. Ah, the man who gets me eh, will get more than me, me I'll get from the man. I'm telling you. Hey, it <laughs> is that because you see you find yourself and you are, you are, it makes you calm it's simply you see and most people need to find themselves find yourself and you become a better wife you will not become a monster you become a better husband because when you find yourself as a man you are not you see your ego is you're relaxed and when your, your, your wife is doing well it's your pride when you go somewhere and they talk about your wife, it is a blessing. Most men see you and they're jealous. And it takes, you see, it takes a wise man to know this. It takes a man who has found himself to know this, that, you see, my wife is my joy. Most men have become torment on them, on, the, on their wives. And let me tell you something. If you're a wise man eh, and you meet a woman who is powerful, it's a trophy. But if you're not wise, you can't handle strong women. Mm. I'm, I'm saying something as it comes. 
And I pray, this, this is for probably just one person. If you are a wise man, and you meet a woman who can push you top, 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 you will go to, to the mass. But if you are not wise, you see, you, your ego will not allow you. Because to find a wise and a virtuous wife, eh, it is difficult. You find a lot of women. You find a lot of women who are good at looking right. But they are not virtuous. They are not wise when it comes to marriage. Same way, when you find a man who fears God and understands marriage and has found his purpose and is walking in the righteousness of God, it's good as. It will be difficult for a man, a righteous man, to be sleeping around, to, to, do you understand, to be talking to you anyhow. Because they are busy. <laughs> you will not tired. When you're busy, eh? when you're very busy, your works are few. Idleness, already, you know, when you're too idle, you get agitated over everything. And when it comes to marriage, it is my prayer that I believe in this end time, the enemy is using marriage to destroy a lot of lives. In the body of Christ, the enemy has already won in using marriage to destroy and mess up a lot of homes. Mm -hmm. That's right. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and has favor with the Lord. It's talking about a virtuous woman, not just every woman, I beg. Marriage is for talking about a virtuous woman. Do you think cooking alone makes a wife? It's not cooking alone, no. Because there are women who can cook and you can, that's the smell of love from afar. You will be full. But when you taste it. Mm. Even before you taste it, there are homes you get even to the aroma alone, you know your wife is home. But after eating, by the time he slaps you with one wet. It's true. We need to change. I don't know why we, 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 we touch on these things. As women of God, you see, the more you find Christ, and that is why me, I'll go, I always go back to somebody's laughing. I'll always go back to that is why some of the things we, you know, we have on, it breeds pride and arrogance. And some of the friends we have around us, there are friends you have around you and you can never enjoy your marriage. Hear me? There are friends you will have around you, woman, and you can never enjoy your marriage. Man, there are friends you have around you and you can never enjoy your marriage. As Brother John is laughing. It's true. There are friends you have around you, eh? You can never enjoy your marriage because every time they will tell you how to treat your husband. Every time they will tell you that the good things you are doing, they will tell you to hold on. Stop. Why are you being stupid? A friend can ask you, why are you being so stupid? Why are you? Are you and at the end of the day, what would have made you happy? Because of your friends, your friends' advice. That, that, that the same advice he's not using you. They mess up your home and they leave you alone. So, yeah, and we're saying this because in this, I said, I repeat it, in this end time, most marriages are struggling because of one wrong choices too, because we're too proud and arrogant. Three, we haven't found ourselves as individual. As individual people, we are not healed yet. You need to be healed. You need to be healed from your father who never was with your mother. And of course, father was never at home. So you never got, you know, Never got the experience of how, or you never had a role model like me. And with that, it takes the spirit of God to heal you completely. These things are not joking. Most people have become so needy in their marriage. Needy, if you say needy, needy, very, very needy, and 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 um, very needy. If you marry a woman who is needy, if you marry a man who is needy, eh, very soon you go out and you come home and they take your knickers and they are smelling it. They're smelling, looking for spam. Needy. You know, but we need to pray. When, when, when you're praying, and most women, it's true. They don't, they don't trust anybody. They don't even trust themselves. And they've seen so much. You have just become a victim. They don't hate you. It's true. You have just become a victim to them. And how do we solve this thing? This is the this is a concern. We need a lot of prayer, and we need to always check ourselves. 
some of the characters need to go. Some of the characters. Generally, some we said we found Christ, you know. Some of our characters, we need to leave it at the feet of Jesus. You need to just be selfless. If you are not selfless, you can't marry and be happy. You have to be selfless. Even as friends, you need to be self. There are certain things that will make you uncomfortable. Man of God, take your preaching, I beg. Before you tell me, I've taken your preaching. You've, 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 you've said, you've done very well. That's, that's powerful. Please, let's, uh, people, let's think. Let's, let's really take our, our time because the time is destroying many things. You know, let's read something quickly. We are gone. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 and 6. Sister Tina said, my father is a wicked man. You see, when you see your father as a wicked man, every man becomes wicked. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, God. James chapter. Pastor, please, James chapter. Pastor. James chapter. Mm, it's true. Pastor, are you there? I think uh, 3 5. Okay, thank you, Sister Hilda. James 3. I think pastors. Oh, now that we're going to. Uh, Somebody saying, yeah, who's the right person? Please, prayer. Before you find the right person, you must know what you want, Jane. You must, you must know what you're looking for. So if you come and ask us who's the right person. The truck is very bad. The Holy Spirit. Somebody's right person may not be your right person. But like, what James said, Obi, if somebody's asking, who's the right person? And I said, somebody's right person may be your wrong fella. Uh, mm -hmm. I, read it. I need to write a book on marriage just like Paul did James let's read it and let's close let's just go and learn um, 5 and 6 3 verse 6 and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members. Five, five, verse five to six. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire can bless. And then six. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiled the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. I think, I think what we'll do is, uh, you see, the, I want the next, next week by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we know what to talk about, but people should check their tongue. It's very little, but it speaks mysteries. It can easily send you to hell. It can make a little issue become a great issue. Many problems in marriages now because people don't know how to control their tongue. That's one of the great, one of the problems in marriages now. Men and women don't know how to control their tongue. Little issues, it can become big. They don't know how to use words, especially some women. A woman is not, your husband is not your co equal for you to be using certain words with him. And it's true. But I think we, we would speak on this um, another time. Time is fast spent. You need to go to work. Oh, me. So maybe another day we'll talk about. Oh, no, it's actually, huh? I'm not. I'm off today. Ah, okay. I don't know my network. Yeah, that's what Hold I'm on, no, I'm coming. Let me let me check my network. Okay.
Call me back. I think my network. Okay. You know, and as as you know, you know, women are meant to to stay. Can you mind the olden days? Women are meant to stay home and and take care of the kids. Now, because of technology, because of you know, um, this generation and you know how things have changed. Now, there's real gender, you know equality that means a woman can work a man can work and stuff like that and that alone you know that thing we need to discuss the fact that you make more money than your husband does not mean you know you should man it on him you know and it's very important that most women come to realization that some of you will be blessed to have more than your spouse as you know some of you are nowadays most most of the women are doing better than the men um and it's my prayer that you understand. Don't don't take your 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 husband's ability to a man to be a man away from him, because you are you are earning more than him. You know it takes a wise woman to to know that with all the praise the Lord with all the money you're making and with all that you you earn more than your husband. You know it takes a wise woman to still submit to 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 her husband. And when that happens. You enjoy life the more, you know. Sister Tina said, my father uh, was rapist. How can a father do that? That is, I pray the Lord heals you. It is a deep wound and it's not nice, but it has happened already. The, 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 where, where do we go from here, Sister Tina? Do not, you know, so we pray the Lord heals you. Because not every man is like that. And it takes the Spirit of God to heal you completely. This is a very deep wound. And, um, you know, most, uh, and let me tell you, marriage will take a lot of people to hell. And the reason why, sometimes, Sister Marvin, sometimes, the reason why, you know, marriages are struggling is because of this gender thing that the enemy has won in bringing into society that women can do what men can do. You know, if women can do what men can do, then... We should have babies by ourselves. And that is what they've created. That a woman can go and get a sperm and insinuate it, praise the Lord, insinuate it, and then, you know, have a, a, a child without a husband. So the society, the devil has won in doing that. But as, as kingdom citizens, we come here and we speak. Yes, Sister Priscilla, equal rights. Let me tell you, man will always be ahead. And it takes women of virtuous to know that. You know, let the men be the head. And it doesn't change who you are. As kingdom citizens, we cannot live like worldly people. And until we become, you know, we, be, we understand these things, we cannot enjoy our marital homes fully. You know, equal rights in homes from the devil. That's right, it's from the devil. Because as a woman, Thank you. it's from the devil. You know, as a woman, as I said earlier, the fact that, you know, you earn more than your husband must not mean you can control and, you know, allow them to be men. And that is why there's so much broken homes. And and so much broken homes, so much wrong pairs, so much our homes, our society is messed up, eh? and it's all coming from home. Messed up society. <laughs> messed up society indeed. And it's all coming from home, and we're all in the church, and the church is not talking. They do marriage seminars on how you people can have sex, and they've left the deep problem rooted, deeply rooted. Pride, arrogance, you know, we can't submit anymore. The Bible says the woman should submit to the man. It did not say the man should submit to the woman. And as kingdom citizens, we have to abide by the word of God fully. And that is part of it. Even if the man is misbehaving, now you choose him. Now you choose him. Give you. Did I choose him for you? You chose him. And if you didn't see certain things from before, you know, you have to, that, my, and I always say this, say, we don't say things you know, just saying it on a faith value, but how do we resolve these things? You know, women have, have to come back to being women, being submissive, you know, and men have to come back from being sub. Some of the men have been, been submissive. You, you see, there's change, gender change. Some men are submissive and some women are loving. Of course, if, you, if you're loving a man, they don't get it. It's, it's, it's miscommunication. So there's chaos. The Bible says the man should love the woman. The woman should be submissive. Praise the Lord. Sorry. 
respect the husband. That's right. But a man takes what is respect when you submit to a man. It 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 it, 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 it if when you submit to a man, you see, they they it's like a signal of love. Yeah, signal of love. Let me put it that way, and that is it. And when you love a woman, it, it, it sends a message of so there's tender. You know that 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 thing has switched, and it's a major thing. I, I believe, you know, the church has to really look into it. And and when these things, as kingdom citizens, we have a way of doing things, and it's different from the from the things of the world. And if until you understand and grasp this, you can enjoy your home fully. And sometimes it's not spiritual. You know, the spirit. It's just gender, you know, that there's something that is misplaced. And the enemy has won in doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's my prayer that as we, the deeper we get into God, the Lord Jesus will help us and remove a lot of characters and attitudes and the Lord will help us, most importantly, to find ourselves. Because I'm telling you, when you find yourself, it makes you a better person. It makes you, you know, you love people. And you don't do things because some people use people in. It's because they, they haven't found themselves. So every person has become an equipment. And it's true. When you find yourself, you, you love people and respect. And, and the same thing transcends across your life. You, you people enjoy your, your around you. Mm, very important. So we must pray, man of God, I'm, I'm just going to let you talk. We must pray for God to help us find ourselves. These are things most people don't know. Most people are walking around, but they don't even know themselves. Until you know yourself, you can never choose a wrong partner. Most people don't know themselves. You need to know who you are. You need to understand that some people, you, you have to make sure that you, you live alone and you're not lonely. Because marriage does not solve loneliness. Mm, also, for please talk. Oh, you said it all. Mm. I believe I, I, I've spoken a bit like people should learn to control their tongue as well. Mm, tongue is major. Major, major. Because major. Maybe the people, best thing is this. Their words are but yes. the tongue can no man tame. Mm. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. The Bible is telling you it's full of deadly poison. Read the verse 8 for them. Uh, the verse says it, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. Verse 10. Verse 10. Mm? Verse 10. Verse 10 says. Read the verse Verse 10 says, oh no, verse 9. Did I read that? No, read the verse 10. Oh, straight to verse 10. Okay. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. These ought not to what? To be. So to be. Mm. I think everybody should check your tongue. Yes. Many marriages have been destroyed by the tongue. By the tongue, yeah. So if we're able to tame it, Mm. But who can tame the tongue? Nobody. Mm. So you need self-control. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can tame the tongue is the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Because if it can, it can influence the tongue to speak right. Yes. To know how to use words. Mm. Because if you leave the tongue for the flesh, mm. it, is a dead, it is more than a, a viper. Mm. It is more than a deadly poisonous uh, snake. And sometimes when people are angry, you know, it's like in your head you think you want to hurt the person. So you want to say something to hurt the person. And even mm -hmm. if you don't mean it, words, you can't take it back. So the tongue, as you're saying, the tongue is a powerful tool. But also for apart from the tongue, the problem is deeply rooted. You, you are, it's deeply rooted and most people don't know themselves. Because when you know yourself, you will know what you want. And you, when you know what you want, that there's certain the problem is deeply rooted. So, mm -hmm. the tongue is very, very a, 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 a thingy, powerful tool, as the man of God is saying. But when it comes to marriage, know yourself, and know some things you can't take. Some characters, if you can't handle it from the beginning, know you cannot handle. And don't don't pray. There are certain things you don't pray about today. There are things you have to let go. And it's very important. 
It, there are things you cannot handle. Not everybody can handle everything. That's why somebody said, who's the right person? And I said, somebody's right person. Excuse me. Maybe someone, another man's wrong person. But you need to know yourself. You need to know yourself. And that will help you. Yeah? Most people have not found themselves. They don't know themselves. Know yourself. And be deeply rooted in Christ. A man who is deeply rooted in Christ. When a woman is finding the man, you find him in Christ. And a woman who is deeply rooted in Christ. When a man is looking for that woman, he will find him in Christ. And you see, these things, yeah, the problem is deeply rooted. It's not on a faith value. Before somebody would say something to hurt you, no, no, that there's certain insecurities, there are certain things. And sometimes, most of the time, people say things they don't mean. You know? And that thing you did not mean. That thing you did not mean. Some men pretend, some women pretend. But if you know yourself and you are prayerful, that is where God will reveal. God is able to reveal a man to mm -hmm. you. God is able to reveal. The Bible says nothing is hidden before God. And when you're deeply rooted in Christ, and when you, 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 you pray about your relationship, and you keep praying till the Lord confirms, why, why would any pretense not be exposed? It will be exposed over time. Mm. Deeply rooted, I'm telling you. And because I have said that, some that said, I'm like, no, 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 nobody marries the enemy. Who wants to marry the enemy? Mm. A man must be deeply rooted in Christ. Deep. When I say deeply rooted, forget forget their title. You see, you see, as forget what I do, forget everything, and look at some of the characters. And the same way, because, and what time? Because you found yourself. And because love covers all things. When you're in love, you, you can't see many things, though. So love with your head. Me, I always say, miss, love with your head. I can say I love you ten times, but like your head. Eh? Hey, please explain it to me, because I don't understand. How, How do you love, love with your, your head? head? I'm just saying that. And it's true. You see, Mean is when you say you love someone, but don't love covers all things. So some characters open your eyes. All I'm saying is the Bible says watch and pray. So you must watch certain things carefully. And the fact that you see does not mean talk about it. There are certain things, and you always ask yourself, Can I handle this? This is you ask yourself continue. If you can't handle it, let it go. Because whatever you see as a little frog will very soon become a dragon. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're seeing is a tip of an eye. <laughs> you laugh. So, Pastor, I think when I say love with your head, that is what I mean. That don't you see, love covers all things according to the word of God, and it's true. So, there are many things when you are so in love. Don't love foolishly. No, thank you. Now, so don't love foolishly. That you know, you, 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 yeah, that's right. Love with your head until hey, you put a ring on it and you are this. Me, me, this is me. This is don't don't take what I say, but it has helped me so much, so much. Oh, mm, love with your head. There are certain characters. Don't close your eyes and keep telling yourself he will change, he will change, he will change, he will change. No, 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 he's there. And what you're seeing is the tip of an iceberg. It's deep rooted. <laughs> it's true. Whatever you are seeing, because the moment you marry, they put a ring on it. They think, oh, I've got head, I've got him. So now the character is like explosion. And you need that's a canal man. Sorry, that's a canal man. It is not a canal man. This is this is you see, this is, as Christians, the, government that about, the fear of God is beginning. Of yeah, I, no, you are saying I want to understand though, because uh, when we talk about marriage, mm -hmm. one thing one thing we should know is marriage is as was established by God Himself. That's right. Thank you. And it, marriage is not for anybody. Yeah. It is for believers. Yes. yes. Because the founder of marriage is Christ. That's right. So anybody that does not have Christ shouldn't even marry. That's right. Correct. So when you marry, okay, the reason why I'm, 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 I'm saying this is because of me, I love to compare the Bible a lot. That's right. 
normally anybody that marry should be free you don't even need to think about who the person is if it is truly the will of god for you, you should, what if you said you should be free means what tell me what it means i'm not saying you shouldn't apply wisdom wisdom should be applied everywhere uh-huh the person that god gives you listen the person that god gives you and is if, if it is truly the will of god for you mm -hmm. I don't think you should marry with your mind. It's not your mind. Nobody marries with them. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying, even if it's the will of God for you, and that is the will of God, you have to check certain characters. And this is what has brought... This if, is what if, has if, if it's the will of God for you, huh? which character? Ah, Again, are you I checking? Tell, let me tell you, even if God has arranged something for me, Esther, this is me, please. For, with my little... And, and I'm saying, this is me, Esther, for please. You know, as you're saying, correct. But the Bible says, even prayer, we should watch and pray. The other day I was asking, well, why would we, why don't we watch, pray and then watch? But God is saying we should watch and pray. So this, you see this, if it's the will of God, marry blindly. Has landed a lot of people. Into, Listen. Ah, master. <laughs> ah, that's Listen. What I'm there are many anointed men Listen. of God who married the will of God and are crying. I didn't say that. I, what I'm saying, I didn't say you shouldn't check character. Uh -huh. You see, one of the things you know that we are living in a body. The real Esther Saforo is living in a body. That's right. But you see, the body comes with characters. Mm -hmm. It's the flesh. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. it needs to, certain things need to be corrected. But what I'm trying to say, okay, I should say, you don't try to be careful of who you marry, of who you have married, you know. I didn't say, I did, you see, man of God, I did not say you, who you have married. I said before you enter into your marriage. Because but every when you act, we're talking about, the will of God. We're talking as kingdom citizens. And as this, I can get it, as, as kingdom citizens, all I'm saying is, you see, I did not say that you marry and you be careful. No, I didn't say that. What I'm saying is, before you put the ring on it, watch and pray. Because certain characters can be hidden. Oh, when you put which ring on where? When you, you marry, I'm just saying, before you marry, before you marry, there are certain things many people close their eyes on. And there are certain things you always have to ask yourself, can I, even if it's the will of God, even if it's the will of God, there are certain things you need to be realistic and ask yourself, can I handle it? Because there are many married that were the will of God. Oh. The, the question is, would God, I'm asking, I'm asking you, if it is the will of God, uh -huh. listen, what I'm talking about is, if it is the will of God, that that man, will God, which God will give you something that is bad, or something that is evil? Oh, Our Bible makes us know. Mm. Oh, the Bible God. tells us, there's no evil in God. That's right. God does not give bad things to his children. I know, but as, as you see, now, now it's debating. Now, as people of God, my I, know I just want to learn. You have to change. No, so I want to learn. Is, all I'm saying is, God will not give you. That's why, if you go to it with, with prayer, maintain it with prayer. And and we are, you see, I'm I don't know, maybe you should pray because people are going through real issues. And I'm not talking about, forget about those who don't know Christ. I'm talking about those who know Christ. People are going through real issues. Are you telling me that? It was not the will of God for them to marry. Some, it is the will of God. But we need to apply wisdom. Because some characters, it need to be yeah, dealt with no one before is, you enter me. into marriage. Or well, that same thing, that was meant to be a blessing, would cause a lot of... Do you understand? So, man of God, I'm not saying that God will not... God will never you see, give anybody... In marriage, hmm? in marriage, hmm? in marriage, hmm? listen, in marriage, there will be ups and downs. Nobody is promising you 100%. But life is full of ups and downs. Life itself is full of ups and downs. Yes. And the man cannot be 100% always perfect. Of course not. The woman cannot be 100% always perfect. Mm. And you see, we need the grace of God to be able to stay in marriage. In if, it is about, if it is about what we think or what we, 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 the way we see things, we will miss it still. We just need grace. 
in the will of God, all we need is grace. Absolutely, in everything. But then in everything, uh -huh. we need grace. But it's not, yes. it's not, this is not the mind of man. No. I'm just saying that the Bible says we should watch and pray. So me, I, 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 based, I, I based on the word of God. Again, when it comes to marriage, man of God, people should watch and pray. Because what we're talking about, these yeah. are real issues. Also for men, that people are going through issues. I have my, that's what I'm I have my own friend who's married. This is a man who loves God, fears God, pray to the extent that, you know, even when he was going to marry, somebody said, can you pray again about them? And he said, I know this is my wife, my own friend. Today, when we finish work, we have to push him to go home. People are going through real challenges. Are you telling me that it was not the will of God? It is, it could be the will of God, but there are certain things you see. That's what I'm saying. You see it and you resolve it. And it, it, these you things don't are resolve issues. Mm? I didn't say you don't resolve issues. And I said, where you are coming from, continue. I mean, what, what is, what is God's grace? If God does not give us the wisdom, we need a lot of wisdom. When it comes to marriage, mm -hmm. it, it, that's what I'm saying. Marriage, one, is not for everybody. Two, marriage, there's a difference between grace and as it, brother John said, we need pastor Philip. It's true. There's a difference between the grace of God because someone can marry someone that will work for him, but it cannot work for another person. And you cannot tell me that's right. Marriage, you have to pray. You have to watch, pray, and watch. and some of the characters. I'm telling you, you have to, you have to, you have to ask yourself. Yes, it's the will of God, but will God give you the grace to handle these things? And this is not for everyone, please. That's what I said. So, I believe in the grace of God, but prayer must get into it. And most importantly, that's why right. we must pray more and pray more until we pray more. And always, depending on the Spirit of God. But until we <laughs> are the fruit of the Spirit, but when we are caught up in these situations, I'm telling you, people are going through real challenges. Eh? And you can't tell me some of the marriage, it is the hand of God. But it's just we, we don't apply wisdom and, and some of the things need to be resolved before people get in. And also, are you going to tell me, sir, you just get in and the grace of God will solve that? People are crying. Oh. And it's my prayer that, you know, they, they, I like this debate. We disagree. It's not that, a debate. Eh? It's not a debate. For me, I that, know some of you are saying. agree to disagree because, you see, all my, my, my prayer is that people's home will be resolved. So people can serve God freely and fully. We've been saved. You said something that you must be free to my you. Every, every child of God, born of the Spirit of God, is free from past, free from a lot of things. But some issues are critical. And this is I'm not what I'm saying. Sorry? It's like you are not getting what I'm saying. I understand perfectly what you are saying. Uh -huh. We talk about marriage. We talk about the problems in marriage. How people should, should resolve certain problems in marriage and all those things. I'm getting you perfectly right. It's not a debate. But I'm just trying to make a certain point. So, wait, but maybe that's what you're not trying to get. But it's good. Well, everything you're saying is perfect. You need to pray. You need to watch. You need to open your eyes. Because I'll not, I'll not want to marry wrongly. Before I marry, I need to open my eyes to see inside before I get my. Those things are perfect. Because my inbox is filled with a lot of women and men crying. A lot of women and men are crying. And these are not worldly people. Okay. These are Christians. So, uh, somebody said, this is an important topic as well to address. Yeah, because many people are going, you see, my inbox is filled with a lot of people crying. So what's that it's a so cry of help. It's like, people are trying everything, but it's not working. People are praying. So where do, where does the church of God go from here? And it's my prayer that the Lord gives us a lot of wisdom to 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 give to speak practicality with the word of god because what will work for a marriage one marriage may not work for another and that is where i'm coming from that i have truly met great men great women nice people i'm not talking about men who are lazy or men who are you know i've met people who have found their purpose so when i say purpose purpose they're not doing well and they marry in Christ, and some uh, most people are sitting now asking, "Did I choose wrongly?" 
was it my fault you know what could i have done better and that is where we we need to so when we're talking that yes you need as a christian everything is grace mm. everything is grace as a how do i live without the grace of god how do i abide without the if i'm in the will of god why have i why have i chose wrongly i'm i'm speaking for someone and pastor there's a great issue we need to address and and i'm not talking about yeah spiritual aspect but people are going through real issues and you'll be surprised that some people choose chose wrong correctly so because we're talking about marriage and all this and that's why i and i'm passionate about this thing because that inbox of mine is filled with a lot of women and men crying for it's a cry of help and you know Mm, that is what Sister Mabel is saying. Yeah, most marriages are taking a lot of people to hell. Eh? Uh, Brother John said we need to ask questions before we get into it. I'm telling you. Uh. Uh, so God bless you all. God bless everybody. Eh? May God help us to live right and to restore our lives and our marriages and everything. So, um, Sister Esther, do you have anything to say? Maybe the next time we come, we we'll, we we'll talk about certain things. But there's a certain topic I want to talk about: hate. Maybe the next time uh, when we come, yeah. Um, I think we we should continue um the uh, Galatians chapter five where we. We ended at a time. Mm -hmm. I think at that time we spoke about idolatry, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think there's, there's, there are more things over there to really touch on. Mm -hmm. And I'm just praying that God will give us the grace to touch on those particular topics too. Because, you know, even in marriage, it's good you spoke about marriage, you know, because even in marriage, marriage has led many people to hate each other. Uh... Marriage has led many, many Christians to hate each other. And hatred itself is another serious thing we need to tackle. Many Christians have hatred for each other. Many, many Christians. They have serious hatred for each other. And hate is a human emotion. Mm. Hatred is a human emotion. It comes from your emotions. And it can invoke, like, it can invoke feelings of animosity. Yeah, hatred, anger, resentment. Hatred can invoke resentment concerning a thing. You know, against individuals, against groups, ideas, religion. Hatred can, can invoke resentment. It can invoke many things. And hatred is uh, is really sending many people to to hell, especially married people. Mm. Relationships, hatred in the heart of men, and it's a feeling. It's a human. It's a human emotion. It comes from the emotions. Mm -hmm. Hatred is a human emotion, and it can invoke. Eh, feelings of animosity it can it can generate other things mm. and you can hate somebody and it can lead to death mm. and these are certain things that i believe we should we should also touch on which i believe maybe the next week god will say tomorrow is sunday maybe monday we touch hatred my god's grace and this thing is really 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 also destroying many, 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 many things. Hatred, many, many, many things. And it's sending many Christians to hell. A lot. Because when your when your emotions are touched, when your emotions are, are striked a bit, it can generate, it can generate serious hatred. And many people over here, you have many people that you hate. Some women hate their husbands. Some women hate their wives. Can you imagine some parents even hate their children because of they were even you know they were stubborn. 
And hatred is not limited to human beings. Hatred can be limited to any other thing, any other human, uh, any other idea. It can, you can even hate an idea. You can hate an object, an animal. Mm. And hatred is mean really, really also destroy many things. You know? And you, you realize that hatred is also associated with anger. Malice, right? Anytime you hate somebody, you have anger for that thing. There's always anger that comes behind it. You know? It disgusts people. And you always want to take dispositions concerning people. He did something to you and it, it hurts you so much that I have taken him at this position. You can't come near me again. And many of us, and we are here. And we, we, we will deal with that hatred. And you see, the reason why sometimes I come here and I, I, I hate certain topics because these are things that are leading many people. Many, many people. And many people are now there in their marriages because of hatred. They are taking dispositions. Because my husband did something against me. So I've taken him at this position. Not to respect him again. I've taken him at this position. And anytime you take a disposition, there's trouble. And many of you over here, there are many times you've taken dispositions concerning many things. Because somebody hurt you. A friend offended you. Somebody gossiped about you. Someone touched your emotion. Somebody stole from you. Someone insulted you. Somebody slapped you. Because they touched your emotion. People build hatred from it. And hatred, what? It is associated with anger. Disgust. Certain people take what disposition because of a particular thing issue. And we're going to touch it. And we're going to touch on points. And you realize that you find yourself in the same things. So you know that if you have hatred or you don't have hatred. And these are points that are really, are really important to touch as well. Mm -hmm. And all these things sometimes are happening in marriages as well. True. True. Marriages. True. And people and even relationships. And can you imagine Christians have they have hatred for their mothers and their fathers? Of course. Uh, because my mother didn't support my marriage. So I've taken my disposition not to take care of them. Mm. Many of you have taken many dispositions that you have to cancel them. But people are not repented yet. People are not really. Mm. Uh, it's not easy. Yeah. So by the grace of God, we, we maybe if God permits, we will we'll touch it again. But people of God, I realize you guys, you should learn to let's learn to share these things so that other people can hear it. Yeah, these are share it to the groups. If you are here, share it on your page. Yeah. So the people can also hear them. Mm. Share it on your wall. So the people can hear them. If I hear you are listening, share. Share it on your wall. Share it on groups that you know. So that other people can... That's a form of evangelism as well. You know. So God bless you, sisters. God bless you. Mm, God bless you, people of God. We pray and, and trust God that uh, your life is impacted this morning by the grace of God. Um, the, the most important thing, beloved child of God, is align yourself with the will of God, really. And if you're truly born again, you have to walk in the righteousness of God. Let the word of God be your yardstick because the fear of God really is the beginning of wisdom. And um, what happens is most of you listen and listen every day. You come, you pray, and you have not made that decision to repent and walk in God's righteousness. You know, and it's very important. So, when you become a new, all the old things should pass away. You must let go and always and every day we must believe God for God to keep, you know, transforming our lives. And that is what brings change. The word of God brings change. 
but it takes the Spirit of God to bring the revelation out of the Word, and that revelation brings transformation. And it's up to you, you know, what we can do is talk to you about Jesus and reveal, you know, whatever secret by the grace of God he gives us to you so that you would be a good believer, a good Christian, preparing yourself to meet the Lord. And um, so we don't come here because we just come because we don't have time, but we come so that by the grace of God, lives will be transformed to the glory of God. And it's my prayer that you not just be hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word also. The Lord bless you so much. I don't have much to say. Um, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you supporting. As yesterday, Father, Father sent me 50 pounds. God bless you, brother. I'm so grateful for, you know, supporting. A sister sent $100. Many people have been sending this morning. As we're standing here, someone sending 100 pounds. And by the grace of God, uh, to the glory of God, I've gotten the money to pay for the premises already. So I give God praise. If I add a little bit, you should be fine. So by the grace of God, uh, God is working. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for, you know, supporting us in prayer and financially. And you know me already. Yesterday I came and I said something peculiar. And I'll repeat it. Maybe sometimes we don't say it. If you're here, you do cocaine and, you know, drugs. You're into, you know, all these Facebook, you know, people duping people, fraud. You're into fraud. You're into prostitution. Don't give me your money. This, don't give me your money to do the work of God. You need to repent from it. You, you understand? Because that money you put in the work of God will become a curse on your head. This is my personal belief. Don't give me that money. You know, when you're showing, you know, supporting us, the little you have, we don't buy up, well, let me speak for a person, you don't able to do what, if you're not led by the Spirit of God, I'm, tra I'm telling you, by the time the time comes, I know one thing that he who sent me would have provided. But I want you to know one thing. I want you to repent, walk in the righteousness of God, align your will with the will of God, because each and every day draws us closer to eternity. Whatever we're doing here, please, everything we're doing, it draws us closer to eternity. And we don't know when, I'm here talking about November. I don't even know whether November will come and meet me or I'll meet November. It's in the hands of God. So everything we do must align with the will of God. And whatever we're doing, don't just follow because everybody is following. Make sure that you are changing. Make up your mind to live right for God. Have a proper relationship with God. This is why, you know, I come here morning, evening, even if I'm tired, the Spirit of God equip me. And I don't want you to be following, following, just like you do on any other page on people's Facebook. It is my prayer that the Lord will bring change in your life, transformation, true transformation. The Lord will change many things, and that testimony will glorify God, not here, as so a foreign ministry, no. But this is why we are called, so that life will be transformed. People will come to Christ, repented, ready to meet the Lord. That is what it's all about. And, um, it is my prayer that, you know, you keep us in your prayers every day. Uh, this is the hardest job I would ever do. But I give God praise for the grace. I want to say thank you to Pastor also. You know, every morning waking up at 5 a.m., you know, commanding your morning. It's been a tremendous blessing and a success. I see the hand of God upon this program and it glorifies God. We want to say God bless you so much. You know, uh, whatever you lack or need or have lost because of you know, as with the Lord, you know, replenish you and bless you real good. It is my prayer that uh, one day you, you testify that the Lord transformed a lot of things because of commanding your morning. And many lives are transformed to the glory of God. This is why we're here. You know, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And I, you know, sometimes I talk like this because I want you to know my purpose personally of doing whatever I do. The purpose is very important to God and it's about, you know, pleasing God, preparing ourselves to be the Lord. This is about the narrow road. We're not Broadway people. So we can't come and, you know, be talking in the air. Everything we say is for you to align your will with the will of the Father so that whatever blessing you deserve to have and to enjoy and to possess and to replenish on this earth, you will live fully to glorify God. And you know your life after. 
will be a glory to the Lord. Please, I want to say thank you once again. God bless you. I may not have sent you a message personally, but I want you to know that I appreciate every little thing you do. You know, following us, sharing our pages. We come in the night, you're following, sharing, you know, telling people about Christ. Some of you have become evangelists because of this. The Lord bless you real good. Uh, I'm so grateful to you. I pray the Lord bless you. Whatever you're losing, Sister, as, as I'm going, I always see you sharing. And I cannot stop emphasizing. I say, God bless you. I'm so grateful to you. I don't know what I would do or say to, to let you know that I'm grateful to you. I know heavens rejoice with what you're doing. Because of you guys, we wake up. Even when we're tired, we empower. You encourage us to come and speak the word in truth. The Lord bless you real good. Um, always keep us in your prayer that the Lord will lead us into all truths so that the word of God will not be preached in error. Everything we do, we will give an account. Mm. And uh, my prayer that we please God fully. That is why we come. The Lord bless you, please. Thank you so much. I'm grateful with a little, with a big, whatever you do. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. I'll see you tonight at 4, this afternoon at 4 p.m. By the grace of God, you know, I want to talk to the ladies about how to keep I'm going to wash my hair in a minute. So when I come to the I make remove my hair so you see my natural hair, how it's grown. And there's a sister who showed me a few things. My hair is naturally thick already, but I want I want her to come and impact your life also. You know, how you can maintain your natural hair to the glory of God. Everything we do must glorify God. And um, you know, Pastor, do you have something to say? Do you have something to say, please? Um, the only thing I just want to say is well. People should keep on supporting God's work and the crusade as well. And um, we should keep on learning and living right for God because the times and seasons that we are in, they are not time for play. And I bless God that God, what God wants to do this year is to draw many people towards Him in repentance in repentance because I believe very soon even if we are not we don't experience rapture there's death, there's death. we don't know when it will come I'm about to sleep. your death will be your rapture so you should always prepare but the, the good thing is we will not die amidst we will die in the will of God amen we are not going, we are not leaving this earth because the enemy killed us. We are leaving because it is the time to go home. Yes, yes. But the, the, what we should do is to prepare our life, prepare us spiritually, physically, prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. And I believe very soon, very soon, our Lord Jesus is coming. Mm. So we should really work on our salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Most of you, I just want to say God bless you for always also leaving whatever you are doing and being here to listen to the word of God. Yeah. If you are not here, we are not there. That's right. So God bless you too. And my prayer is to see you prosper. Jesus' name. Prosper spiritually and prosper physically so that the work of God can advance. Amen. You know, so God bless you. Anybody that wants to support you, just inbox by her sister Esther. Mm. Go to her inbox and inbox her. If you want to support the cause, if you want to support the crusade, you want to support the ministry in any form, you can support. And mm. if you are around Kumasi, you have a spare house to give to people that will be coming from afar to sleep. Yeah. You can also give it. Mm. I'm not saying that. Anyway, I mean, give it out so that people can sleep there. Hallelujah. So that yeah. people can come, here, come, and, come and live there. Because people will be coming from far. People yeah. will be coming from different places to the program. So if you have a house you are not using, you have a house that is free, you can say, okay, I want to give this house for this cause. Yes. If you, you know, it's not for a dash, but just for people within that period of time. For yeah, people to lay their heads. Those that have, don't have a place to stay and come and mm. lay their head and after that, they can go. 
Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The Please, Lord can you hear me? Yeah, clearly. The Lord bless you so much. Please, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Ah. So, God bless you, everybody. God bless you, people of God. Keep on doing what you're doing. And um, yeah. I know your reward might not see your reward now, but I believe so much that your reward will be greater in heaven. And I pray yeah. that God should remember each and every one of us mm. the day he shall come for his people. Jesus. You know, God bless you. And keep us in prayer. Keep us in prayer because it's not easy. It's not mm. everything that we come here to say. That's it's right. not every dream that we explain. Yes. But I know there's a there's a line that has there's a battle line that has been drawn. The enemy has really risen, but God is still our protection. Mm -hmm. So God bless you, God keep you, and God preserve you. Amen. Amen. You want to pray with them? You want to pray with them? That's good. Are you going to pray with us? I'm done. Oh, I thought you were going to pray with us. Uh, Father, Lord we, Lord, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for your presence in our midst today. We thank you for the wonderful things that you keep doing in our midst. Father, as we started with prayer, we end with prayer. We give all glory and all adoration back onto your throne of grace. We say we thank you. Sweet Holy Spirit, we bless you for coming in our presence. We thank you for your anointing and your strength and your empowerment. Lord, we commit the people that have heard your word unto you. We pray that as we have sowed your word in their heart, Spirit of the living God, go and water it in their hearts. Holy Spirit, visit each one of them. I pray that let their heart desires let whatever problem they came with be resolved in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray lastly that you remember us on the day you shall come for your people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. Please see you at 4 p.m. today, UK time.